The disciples did not want to be in this non-Jewish region, the Decapolis. Jesus had again taken them outside their comfort zone. But once there, they started seeing scenes that far surpassed what they experienced back home in Capernaum. As all the sick people of the region were brought to Jesus, and they only had to touch the cloak of Jesus to be healed. All of them. Jesus withdraws his disciples to a desert place for a break, but the crowds follow him. 4,000 non-Jews. They camp out for three days listening to his teaching until, of course, their food runs out. Jesus, full of compassion for these guys, asks his disciples about feeding them. And they come up with all the reasons why such a task was impossible. Because they didn't factor Jesus into the equation, even though only a few weeks earlier he had fed 5,000 Jews. The disciples looked into their own supplies and had just seven small flat rolls and a few little sardines. Before meeting Jesus, these were men of no importance. Yet when the insignificant put the insufficient into the hands of Jesus, anything is possible. Jesus blesses the bread and fish and the creation miracle happens so that the food is multiplied again and again. This crowd of poor people Faced with an endless free meal, ate until their stomachs felt bloated, and the leftovers filled seven large reed baskets. It wasn't just enough, it was far more than that. It was a sign of God's superabundance, even for these non Jews. Those who knew the Jewish scriptures would see that the two feeding miracles pointed to the lawmaker Moses who provided bread from heaven for the Jews in the wilderness, but also the prophet Elisha, who saw the miraculous multiplication of bread when he fed his prophet school of 100 men from a few small loaves, with plenty left over. Jesus is showing that he fulfills both the law and the prophets. He is the real deal, the Messiah, the Lord of all. But in feeding both the Jews and non-Jews, he's also the Lord for all, including us. We may be led into places we don't want to be and feel totally inadequate to accomplish the task ahead. Without Jesus, that is true. But if we remember what Jesus has done before and we factor him into our equation, then it doesn't matter how insignificant we feel or how little we have if we place all we are and all we have into the hands of Jesus then all things are possible. Prepare to be amazed. Amen. You're